Well, dirty, wet and dangerous drains are more suited to rats, cockroaches or ninja turtles. But believe it or not, there is a secret society that explores the tunnels and drains beneath our major cities. They call themselves the Cave Clan, and today, tonight, is the only media that's been allowed to film them. Laura Sparks went down to their level. As we sleep in the dead of night, they come. A secret society that descends deep into the underworld beneath our cities. Their faces as hidden as the labyrinth of highways, tunnels and caves they explore. It actually captures people's imagination, the idea of people be exploring under underground realms. There are railway tunnels that go nowhere. Right? There's um, the remnants of war wartime bomb shelters. They leave a calling card bearing their name, the Cave Clan. What you are watching is the only footage and TV interviews of the clan at work. Since this extremely rare footage was shot, the Cave Clan have enforced a complete media ban. There's a lot of controversy about them, obviously. My understanding is that they started in Australia about 20 years ago. They feel very comfortable about not being known. Around the world, beneath cities like Paris and New York, whole communities exist underground. In the 80s, the TV show Beauty and the Beast centred around a disfigured character, Vincent, born and raised among the mole people of New York. Films like Hugh Grant's Extreme Measures centred their plots around these communities that lived in the maze of subways beneath New York. And there's a little bit of mud just through here, so just be very careful. For most of us, this is the preferred way of seeing our cities underground with a guided tour. But what the Cave Clan do is something completely different and completely illegal. <laughs> They call it urbex, urban exploring, and the closest you may ever get to them is here on the internet, where they post many of their discoveries. With a little bit of ingenuity, you know, a pair of bolt cutters and a, and a uh and uh, some abseiling ropes are able to explore all these amazing worlds. The Cave Clan have again entered the public debate with the deaths of two people caught in a stormwater drain at Sydney's Lurline Bay over the weekend. The tragedy again raises the issue of the risks of these intrepid outings and the reasons people like the Cave Clan do it. Some people climb mountains and some people drive cars fast. We go in drains and tunnels. It's the unknown. It's the adventure of it all. Stalactites are one in the place and it changes shape all the time and you come out miles from where you got in. And, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Coming up and not knowing exactly where you are. Just you know, being there in a place that people rarely ever go. But there is one place they will never go where the risks are too great. If anything involves sewerage, we'll just keep straight out and um, be irresponsible and stupid to do so. Well, in all big cities, you get people who, in a sense, like the underworld. Um, and in this case, it's the real underworld. It's the, the underbelly of the city. Sociologist Professor Andrew Jacobowicz of the University of Technology, Sydney, has studied the cave clan and other similar urban subcultures. There are lots of groups in cities, in fact, in, in, big, in mass societies everywhere, who live just outside them, on the edge. Um, they like to test themselves psychologically, physically, against the, um, the stuff that happens. He says they are a far cry from the feral stereotype of other extreme thrill-seekers. They're usually uh, fairly middle-class sorts of people, mainly men, not only, but mainly men, um, usually in their 20s and 30s, um, who like the sense of being part of a band of brothers. The mystery that shrouds the cave clan is part of the clan's code of secrecy. They are people who try and keep themselves private from the world. They have a media ban um, in many situations. They don't like talking to the mainstream media. Um, they like to feel that they are on the edge outside the mainstream. I think that, to be honest, they really enjoy the cloak and dagger stuff they go on with. I mean, I've tried so many times to get interviews with these guys. Livenews.com.au's Tim Brunero is one of the select few granted an interview with one of the clan's leaders. What I learnt was that they're very organised, they're very professional about it, they have a great deal of expertise when it comes to mechanical things, when it comes to the internet, um, engineering, that sort of thing. They know how to read blueprint maps, they know how to read Sydney water maps. But Tim was to see another side of the cave clan when he printed something 
they didn't agree with. When I get something wrong, I'll get a phone call on my home phone. How would they get my home phone? At eight, you know, I'm sitting there at 8 o'clock at night about to have some tucker and I get, <laughs> I get, I get this phone call telling me, oh, you got this wrong, you got that wrong. It's just interesting. It's like they're there but not there. It's almost like they're underneath. But rather than maligning them, Tim says this counter-cultural crew should be celebrated. There's a little bit of the sort of Aussie spirit um, in there, uh, just like Burke and Wills. Uh, they're sort of going somewhere where now people, other people haven't been. No good if you're claustrophobic.